Hey, this is your video on probability sampling and in this video we will be discussing three types of probability sampling uh, simple random sample, stratified random sample and cluster sampling um, as we discussed in the previous video you should know that um, the only way to ensure a representative sample from the population is through probability sampling so these are the techniques you will be using if you want a representative sample but in order to get a probability sampling uh, a sample you need a sampling frame okay. all types of probability samples require a sampling frame now what is a sampling frame it is a list of all the sampling units in the population it is a list of all the sampling units uh, in the population, right? So it should con it's a list that contains all the elements in the population or groupings of these elements. For example, if you were studying CHHS students, that was your population, right? then your sampling frame will contain a list of all current CHHS students. It is a list of all CHHS current students or groupings of these students. Um, if your population was cars in the city of Salinas, then in order to do a, uh, a probability sampling from, from uh, probability sample for this, you would need a list of all cars owned by residents of Salinas. Right? If you wanted to do, if your population was Monterey County residents, then you would need a list containing all Monterey County residents or groupings of these residents, as we'll see. So you need a list of all your sampling units in order to do a probability sample. Right? That's what makes um, um, probability sampling um, so difficult in some cases because it's hard to get a, a, a good sampling frame. All right, so let's start with a simple one, or the simplest one, a simple random sample. Um, it's, it's in theory is the simplest but it's not so easy to obtain right? you need uh, a very good sampling frame to do this so a uh, simple random sample is uh, equal to you know, putting all the population names or say in one hat and drawing one at a time uh, without replacement right? so the technical definition you have it here you know, if a sample size of, uh, n is drawn from a popula population in such a way that every possible sample of size n has the same probability of being selected then you have a simple random sample right? let me give you an example suppose that we want to get a random sample simple random sample of CHHS students so what we need first we need yes a sampling frame and it's a list of all the students right? So suppose there are a hundred students in CHHS I have a list of all of them um, and they're all smiling um, we have lower division, higher division, all of them so to obtain a simple random sample I just order them right? put numbers to all of them like this will be student 1, student 2, student 3 and so on this will be student 100 and then I obtain randomly um, you know, as many as I want so suppose that I wanted to get 10 students right? um, then I have a list of all of them, they're all numbered and in this case I used uh, Microsoft Excel I asked Excel to give me random numbers from 1 to 100 without replacement and Excel gave me this sample so I randomly picked you know, these students student number 3, student number 16, student number 23, 28, 44 and so on. Now this is a representative sample. This is a representative sample, it's a simple random sample, it's as representative as it gets. Um, I will discuss this function that I used um, in, a, in, in, in a later video. Now, you can also use stratified random sample and you obtain this by separating the population elements into overlapping groups. Right, at least two overlapping groups called strata and then selecting simple random samples from each of these um, 
strata, right? Now, why would you do this? Because sometimes it reduces the cost of collecting your data. Um, in, in many cases, it is better than simple random samples. When you are estimating uh, population parameters by these subgroups, right, or these strata. And um, also, in general, when the strata are homogeneous in, 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 in the variable that you're interested in estimating, um, it will give you lower estimation error. So what, that's why you would use a uh, stratified random sample. In our example, we have lower division and higher division CHHS students, right? Now we have the sampling frame and the sampling frame is identifying which of these students are lower division and which ones are higher division. Um, 30 of them are lower division, that's stratum one, and 70 in the population, right, are higher division, stratum two. Now, to obtain a stratified random sample, what I would do is just select simple random samples from each of the strata. That's, that's what I do. Now, how many should I choose from each strata? Um, now, now, there's not a hard rule on it, but many researchers and statisticians suggest that you use proportional allocation. Right? So, and that under proportional allocation uh, for stratified random samples, um, you have you know the number of observations selected within each stratum is proportional to the size of the stratum in relation to the population. So, if a stratum represents 30% of the population, then observations collected from that stratum should represent 30% of the sample. In our uh, example. In stratum one, we have 30 students, right, in the population, so they represent 30% of the population. So they should also represent 30% of our sample. If my sample was of 10 students, then, and stratum one is 30% of the population, then they also should also represent 30% of the sample. That is, three of my sample of 10 should be from stratum, stratum one. Similarly, in stratum 2, they represent 70% of the population, right? So sh they should represent 70% of the sample. If a sample is, if, um, the size is 10, then 7 observations should come from this second stratum, right? Now, now that you know how many to select from each stratum, you randomly select them. Um, in this case, I asked Excel, give me randomly pick 3 observations from the first stratum, and it gave, gave me these three. Right? The observations 3, 16, and 23, and I did the same with stratum 2, and it gave me these seven observations. Right. Now, let's discuss the third one, that's cluster sampling. Um, now, a cluster sample is a probability sample uh, in which each sampling unit is a collection or cluster of elements. Right? Now, you don't have the exact elements, but you have groupings of these elements. Um, now, usually, this way of sampling is cheaper than stratified random sampling or, or uh, simple random sampling. That's why we use it. Um, it is also extremely useful when your sampling frame doesn't have the individual elements, right, that you want to get to, but has groupings of them. The sample, the, I mean, the census uses. Uh, cluster sampling, right? They don't have a list of all the residents, right? But they do have a list um, of all you know, census blocks or all census tracts. So they randomly select these groupings and then they survey all of the elements in these groupings, right? Um, and, and another example, if you wanted a list of all CSUMB students as a sampling frame, right? You will probably not get it. That is confidential. However, you can obtain a list of all the classes offered at CSUMB in a particular semester. That's online, right? And, and the students are clustered or grouped into these classes. So you can randomly select this, uh, you know, the classes and then survey all the students in these classes. That is a, a random uh, cluster sampling. Now, in our um, example, right, um, suppose that we have we cannot observe all CHS students. We don't have a list of them, right? Um, but you know what classes are offered, 
right? Let's say these eight classes are offered this semester. There are eight clusters, and all the students are in those classes. Right? So what you do is you first randomly select clusters, and then you survey all the students in these selected clusters. So um, now choosing the number of clusters that you that you want to survey is is tricky. There's no you know hard uh, rule on that. Uh, it depends on how much resources are available to you and the precision required. Um, but in this case, let's suppose uh, I, I have you know money and time uh, for three of these clusters. So I randomly select three. I ask Excel give me you know. Uh, choose three numbers from one to eight randomly and Excel chose three classes right 385 302 and 211 uh, so these are the classes that I need to survey and then I survey all of them so it's in 385 302 211 that gives me 41 students this is a convenient way to sample um, students uh, when you don't have a list of all the students, right? But you have a list of clusters of these students. So um, the topic is vast. There is, you know, there are PhDs that you can get in uh, in sampling um, sampling techniques. Um, now, but what I want you to remember from this lecture uh, is these three types of probability sampling um, that they all have their pros and cons. And most importantly, that this probability sampling is the only way to obtain representative samples. Um, and in order to do this, any of these methods or, or use any of these techniques, you need sampling frame. You need a sampling frame. Your sample will only be as good as your sampling frame. And um, this is important. All the statistical techniques you will learn in this course assume a simple random sample, right? the first technique that we discussed. The other techniques um, require different statistical um, methods, which we will not cover in this, in, in this class. You, would, you can cover them in, in Raj's school. Um, in the next lectures, I'll show you how to obtain these uh, probability samples using these three techniques with a sampling frame with Excel. And we'll also discuss what happens when you don't have a sampling frame um, and you have to use non-probability sampling. All right, thank you for watching.